His parents ran a restaurant and pub when he was growing up, and for celebrity chef Jamie Oliver, that was the first step into building his culinary empire. Today, he's producing everything from TV shows to books and restaurants. Creator and host of Behind the Brand, Brian Elliott sat down with Jamie to talk about what it takes to become a successful entrepreneur. Let's do a quick uh, knife skills lesson. You've got three methods of chopping. Okay. This is cross chopping. Okay. Then you've got the rock chopping. Notice that my fingers are in. So just tap, 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 tap. So hold it here and it's... You want to be over it more. So... Is that it? Now he's looking like a pro. Hi, I'm Brian Elliott. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Brand. Today I'm here with chef and entrepreneur Jamie Oliver. So how did you transition from you know, being someone who makes great food to sort of celebrity status, getting to TV and doing your thing? How did you get discovered? Well, it, was, it wasn't intentional. I didn't want to get on TV. I think the worst people are the ones that want to get on TV. Mm -hmm. I think you, know, you just have to be in a position where you're working somewhere of interest and things should just happen. You know? And I think that's the best way to look at it. For me personally, I was called in on a day when someone was off sick. Uh, I was covering uh, a particularly exciting part of the kitchen, which was called Hots 2, which was like the frito misto, the risotto, the pasta, and the slow cooked meats. Um, so I had really quick cooking stuff, stuff that would start and finish in a commercial kitchen in one and a half minutes. So it was very colourful, very quick, and, and a kind of t a TV maker's dream. Sure. Um, and there was a film crew there that night doing a documentary about the restaurant that we worked in, which is called uh, the River Cafe, which is you know, probably one of the most famous restaurants in England. Um, and anyway, fast forward six months, you know, they filmed everyone. It wasn't just me, they filmed everyone. Yeah, but, but right place, right time, right? Yeah, totally. And I wasn't even supposed to be on that night. Um, but um, six months later, they broadcast the show and I was all over it. The phone call started the next day and they're like, who's this kid? Who's this kid? And um, I'd, I'd made this fairly technically challenging pasta called a rotolo, mm -hmm. where you make a big sheet of pasta and fill it with spinach, braised spinach and ricotta and roll it all up. And, yeah. You know, so they were kind of, I was, but I was a baby. Yeah. I was technically, I was technically pretty good, uh, but I was a baby, I was 20 years old. Yeah, but like a savant, I mean, you, you're a natural. Well, I guess, everyone always said I looked like a baby, but I had old man's hands, you know, and I got big old butcher's hands, you know, and I think um, when, you, when you've been doing stuff for 10 years, whether you're 10 to 20 or 20 to 30 or 30 to 40, like the way you hold stuff yeah. and the way you do stuff and the sort of economies of movement and you just don't muck about. When you're a novice and you're sort of like all over. <laughs> like I was in there. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's, you know what I mean? So it's, it, yeah, I guess that was my USP, like young and could cook and, um, uh, and, it, and it all, the Naked Chef was born really. And, um, there's been a lot of luck on the way, but I've worked really hard and, and sort of tried to go. I got kind of pretty bored of the celebi stuff and the structure of it and the papers and the media. I got pretty bored of it and very cynical about it quite early. So about three, three, four years in, I started to realize it was about what I said no to that became more important than what I said yes to. You know, I want to underscore what you just said. You know, a lot of people watch this show, they're entrepreneurs. They have their own business. And whether it's you know food related or otherwise, that's what you just said is gold. Um, being able to say no, understanding, you know, picking the right project, yeah. I think is really key. If you want to check out all the interviews with Jamie and Brian plus other celebrities, go to behindthebrand.tv. A turning point in Italy where you realize this is my goal, this is my path, and I'm going to do big things in this competitive restaurant industry. Well, it was that, that was less about the competition and the intensity. That was more about learning the actual background of technique and style. So I learned as much in Italy how to make stuff, but I also learned how simple plates had to be and how to remove those extraneous ingredients. Did you have any doubt about your move from leaving the Four Seasons restaurant to making it out on your own in a different country? Did you have doubt and how did you overcome it? I have, for all of my life, been a victim of something we call delusional optimism. So I have yet to face too many doubts. There are moments when it's tough and you just put your head down and make sure that you do your work. That's effectively how you get rid of all of the problems in your world. Just put your head down and do what you know how to do it. Do it best. Embellish it. Flourish. 
and survive. In addition to running several restaurants as well as publishing cookbooks, it seems like the celebrity chef also has to be a digital chef nowadays. Could you discuss what Mario is up to in that field? Well, uh, not everyone has to be everything. I'm just lucky enough that I have a group big enough and smart enough team that enables me to do all the things that I want. So I'll dabble in the Twitter world or in the Instagram world and have somebody take care of the Facebook stuff for me. But at the end of the day, you can't be at all. So choose the things that you're really good at and hire people to help you do the other things. Rachel Ray first found success in the kitchen, but she's more than just a good cook. Her multimedia empire expands out of the kitchen and into books products, and as always, in our televisions. Entrepreneur, contributor, and founder of The Pursuit.TV, Kelsey Humphreys, sat down with Rachel to talk not only entrepreneurship, but life. I am here with Rachel Ray. Definitely a very cool moment for me. You are not just an awesome personality that everyone just feels like you're our best friend, <laughs> but also such a hustler, you guys, and such an amazing entrepreneur. So I wanna start right off with the news of your new line and all the new things you've got going on, and then I wanna back up just a little bit and talk about the beginning. Mm -hmm. But first, tell us about the new line of furniture <clears throat> and what, your, what inspired it. Well, it's actually three different lines of furniture that are going to become six very shortly. Wow. Um, <clears throat> what inspired it is uh, a friend of mine, uh, our COO, uh, got married to a great designer and contractor and uh, they started visiting our house together uh, I don't know a couple years ago and my friend Michael said to me you know who, who decorated your house I said what the hell are you talking about of course they decorated my house I want to live in a house I don't know the story of everything that's in it so, yeah um, you know aside from wall coverings and stuff so um, he saw all the different spaces I live and they're all very different Upstate looks kind of like, I don't know, beat up country Italian and New York's more like <laughs> mid-century modern. Um, so, you know, we started talking about wouldn't it be great if sofas came with rectangular cushions, if you could always hide cords in everything, mm -hmm. if you had pieces that were designed to work in either bedrooms or living rooms, if drawers pushed through and were two-sided. Basically, we had a, a session of pardon my French, but we were bitching about what furniture didn't do. Mm -hmm. And so he said, you know, you should design furniture yourself. I said, well, nobody would take me seriously because I'm not mm. a furniture designer. I'm mm -hmm. not an architect. <laughs> I never went to design school. <clears throat> and he said, well, that really doesn't matter. You have some great ideas. So I doodled up what I meant about a few things. Michael turns them into real, <laughs> you know, Physical this will function. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he turns them into schematics that people understand. Okay. And uh, we we started this kooky business based on doodles and, and problem solving. Um, and our furniture, we make everything that could possibly be made here, here. In the US. Yep. Um, and our price point um, is pretty much nothing over two grand. So it's not the cheapest, but it's certainly the best value. Um, it's selling phenomenally. And I think that um, for me, I'm most proud of it because it does what I try and do with, with kitchenware design, solves problems. Mm. Um, all of these pieces are multifunctional. They're very beautiful. You don't have to be rich to have a rich life. Your home environment should reflect that as well. Mm -hmm. So um, for me, it's, it's just making me joyously happy because now I get to keep doing what I love to do as a hobby. I get to add it to my repertoire of, of what I do, you know, for, for yeah. a living. Yeah. So <clears throat> it's also good because um, it makes my husband very happy because <laughs> I love design so much and I, I bring home so many things. Now I have an outlet so I don't have to actually <laughs> live with it all. In I can house, design right. it and give it away. Yeah. yeah. So you just said three lines becoming six lines. You have so many SKUs. They were giving me your one sheet and I was just like, how does she do it all? And actually people wrote in, that was multiple questions they gave me. How could she possibly do it all? Sometimes you have multiple shows going all at once. How do you juggle everything? Love what you do. When it comes to furniture, I doodle it on a blue pad that I have, a, a, just a rip out piece of paper. Mm -hmm. As I said, Michael does the hard part. He turns it into like, this is the way it has to you know, be constructed mm -hmm. for it to work that way. I mean, it's, it's doodles and it's things that I like in the world that I think could be made slightly better. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I'll rip out pages in magazines or take pictures of uh, pieces that I love that are just too expensive that I would never spend that money for and figure out a way to make a, a, a solution product that's similar but smarter and more affordable for folks. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to food, my husband is a musician. He writes music every day. I write food every day. That's just what I do. Mm -hmm. I keep everything in notebooks. Um, and I mean, that's how it works. It sounds silly, but that's that's how it all works. I write it in my notebook first and then I spend every morning 
when I'm getting ready for work and somebody's drying my hair or whatever, typing. Yep. And then I send all that work in and it's fun. And then I come here and there's really nothing to do here but chat and cook. It's what I would do at home. <laughs> do you right? know what I mean? It doesn't really feel like, feel work. like work. I mean, I've worked 80 to 100 hours a week in restaurants and in retail. and This is nothing. This is like a walk in the park. Hmm. And I hate sleep. You know, right. I, I, I sleep with a notebook next to me. I watch old movies when I wake up and, and write in my notebook. My husband's the same way. We are very much night owl people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I could sleep when I'm dead. Yeah. I, I don't want to waste my time doing that here. And yeah. I'm somebody who sleeps a lot better if I'm completely mentally exhausted. Yeah, you know? me too. For more, you can check out Kelsey's website, thepursuit.tv. Founders of Serenata Brands are entrepreneurs in the food business, including one growing up on an organic farm. Serenata Brands creates organic options for products consumed daily or weekly, starting with breakfast or on-the-go occasions. Serenata's Organiche Boosters organic produce powders are an ideal boost for smoothies, yogurts, cereals, smoothie bowls, and even oatmeal. Options include both fruit and vegetable produce powders from banana to carrot to kale and even shiitake mushrooms. And for lunch or dinner, starting with its charbroil organic rubs and seasonings, ideal for any barbecue occasion to the first all-natural organic pizza topping business, Organitza, on a mission with the Rustic Crust brand to instill new innovation in the pizza category, Organitza has a long list of organic pizza toppings to choose from. So Organitza is founded to fill the niche specifically within the pizza industry. So what we're trying to do is innovate the dry pizza toppings that you would see standard in restaurants and also in the home. Rustic Crust, uh, they're a company that makes um, sauces and they make doughs, amazing doughs. They were founded by Russ Sterl and uh, Organitza and Rustic Crust are teaming up to provide an all-inclusive healthy pizza option section in grocery stores. Serenata Brands, in the home, out of the home, every day. To learn more, go to serenata.us and rusticcrust.com.